Thank you so much, Sister Peggy. I'm going to make it through. Heaven is in my view. Thank you for blessing us during this worship service. We praise God that we have made it to 2021. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy New Year to you. It is a joy to praise the name of the Lord. And today we come in communion and thanksgiving for the sacrifice that Jesus has made. And in that brief sermonette that Pastor McBride gave, we were jumping hallelujah for the fact that Jesus never asked us. He just went to Calvary and died in our place. And we give God thanks for that. My brothers and my sisters, I won't keep you very long. Well, I may. Uh, you're home. <laughs> uh, let's look to the word uh, found in Philippians chapter 3. And uh, we are looking at 13 and 14. And this, you know very well, forms the basis for our theme for this year. And uh, let me read it and let us continue. Pastor McBride started on last Sabbath as he spoke about it and we will continue to share from this passage as the year goes by as we speak about pressing on toward the mark hear the word of the Lord brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I just want to entitle our subject for today, Pressing Forward. Pressing forward. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us to worship you today. Even as we worship, we know that there are several hearts that are broken because of the passing of loved ones. We pray, God, that you will continue to shower your presence around each and around all who are grieving at this time. Give comfort and healing to those who are not well. Revive the spirits of those who are challenged spiritually. Now, God, as we open the book to take a look, as we open your word, it is your voice we desire to be heard. I've prayed this prayer several times, but I pray one more time, please. Do not allow the sermon to get in the way of the message, nor the preacher in the way of the cross. But I pray that Jesus will be lifted. Jesus will be seen. Jesus will be heard. And then when all is said and done, may only his name be glorified. We pray this with thanksgiving because we pray in his name. Wherever you are, go ahead and say amen and amen again. Pressing forward. Now my brothers and my sisters, I am not usually a film promoter. Nonetheless, the essence of the movie that I'll mention precisely portrays the point that I want to make today. The movie is entitled Running Against Time. The storyline revolves around a man named David Rhodes, a university history lecturer. Uh, David Rhodes is still haunted by the death of his elder brother who was killed in Vietnam. Now, when Rhodes discovered that a scientist, Dr. Koopman, had invented a time machine, Rhodes convinces him to use this time machine to send him back in time, send him 
1963 so that he could thwart the assassination of uh, President John F. Kennedy. This, he believed, would prevent strong U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War and thus he would be able to save his brother's life. Well, the Koopman, the scientist, accedes and sends Rhodes back in time to stop the president's murder by Lee Harvey Oswald. However, when Rhodes gets back to 1963, he is unable to stop the killing of JFK. In fact, according to the movie, his plan actually backfires because he is blamed for the shooting of the president. His girlfriend who was watching from the other side, she decides that she needs to go and save him. So she convinces the scientist, Dr. Koopman, to let her travel back in time, but to allow her to travel back in time before his time so that she could help him. So she also goes back in time according to her travel plan, but that doesn't work either because upon arriving back in time, she is hit by a motor car and is taken to the hospital. So she could not help him and he could not help his brother. And the movie goes on and on showing basically and clearly that any attempt that we make to change the course of history would uh, yield significant consequences, some desirable and some undesirable. I'm making any trouble today but there are people who are trying to go back and relitigate the election. It is already over. It is done. You can go back in time. Now the question is, have you ever contemplated what it would be like if life could be lived in reverse? Or if you could go back in time? Let's, let's just say for 2020. What are some of the things you would attempt to change? That relative that passed away last year, what are some of the things that you would have loved to say to that person? That bad decision you made, what would you have done differently? That situation that precipitated your downward spiral, knowing what you know now, how different would your life be if you were to live it over again? Would you be in the same career? Would you be married to the same person? Don't, don't answer, brethren. Don't answer. I know, I know you're sitting beside. Don't answer me right now. Would you use some of the mature knowledge you now have to avoid making the mistakes that you have ultimately regretted or would you just live the same way you lived and be the same person you are today? Would you have studied more in college? Would you have eaten better? Would you have exercised more? Would you have prayed more? Would you have ignored some situations and some negative people that allowed you to be so stressed out. Talk to me somebody. Would things have been different? Put in the chat if you feel so inclined. Uh, write it in Facebook or on YouTube. Tell me. Would you have been different? Each of us can attest to the fact that there are many times in our lives when things just did not turn out the right way. The way that we wanted them to turn out. And we have found ourselves wishing to go back in time. If only I could begin again is what we say. If I could start all over again. These kinds of events occur daily. And to be sure, no one 
is exempt from feeling that way. The truth is, my brothers and sisters, how would a do-over look for you? Now, it is not breaking news. It is obvious. We cannot turn back the hands of time. What is done is done. So much for that. Even with the start of a new year, it is a new page, but it's not the same page as the previous page. It is a different page. You're not wiping out 2020. You are simply starting 2021. And let me say to you that if the devil is alive, you're still going to be tempted. You're still going to have some hellish people around you. You're still going to have some problems. But the good news of the gospel is that although we cannot go back and relive the past, we can change course and with God, we can become new in him to start in him again. Can I hear somebody say amen? And there is forgiveness for the negative past in Christ. There's pardon full and free. We can press forward. That's the good news of the gospel. And I know somebody needs to hear this word today because you have been living but still plagued by your negative past. They're still living with the guilt of bygone sins. Still living with self-reproach. And as we move into 2021, there are many of us haunted by the ghost of might have been and the hindsight of if only for 2020. So the question that confronts us on the sermonic table today is how do we deal with what is in our past? How do we press forward? How do I deal with the past foibles and the offenses that I know the members of the Kansas Avenue Church, they talk about me privately over dinner on Sabbath. Do I overcompensate? For my past deeds, misdeeds, and bad deeds by trying to do spiritual penance in super righteous extremes? Do I live my life trying to prove to others that what happened in the past was not the real me? The real me is what you see now. What do I do to move forward? I hear the Apostle Paul respond in our text for today. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I give you three things that you need to contemplate in going forward in pressing forward and then I'll be out of your way number one the apostle tells us that the first thing to do in pressing forward is to forget about the past I'm not trying to be cold or callous unfeeling or insensitive the apostle Paul says this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind Paul is trying to tell us to develop what Valerie Love calls divine amnesia. This type of forgetting the past is not about ceasing to mentally recall. No, this is not about memory erasure. I know that there are some things that you would love to erase from your mind. Some situations, some bad relationships, some bad dating outings you would like to forget, but that's not what the apostle is saying. He's not trying to have you do a memory erasing. No, no, no. Paul says forgetting the past, and when he says forgetting the past, he uses the contracted Greek word epithalamine, 
and that by implication suggests not that we are erasing it from our minds, but we are no longer allowing it to control our lives. I wish I had a witness. Don't be debilitated by your past. The predicament of the past, the pain of the past, the frustration of the past. We must submit ourselves to the control of God so that the past does not control us. The control of God is the defense and the stronghold against the past. The past cannot control us as long as God is controlling. I wish I had a witness. The past cannot control you if God is controlling you. So for those mistakes you have made, you take responsibility for your actions and their consequences, but submit to God. Yes, you repent and ask the Lord to heal you so that you do not have to do it again. But don't dwell. On the guilt, submit yourself to God. Yes, you apologize where necessary. You seek forgiveness where necessary. But you don't let anyone hold you hostage to your past mistakes. Submit yourself to God. Do not get so caught up with looking behind you that you are blinded to what God has ahead of you. Some years ago, I was semi-speeding. I said semi-speeding on the 495 in New York, the Long Island Expressway. Suddenly, I came upon a police car parked at the side of the road. Come on, somebody. I was semi-speeding. And I looked to the side of the road. I kind of felt that he would find me on the borderline. Help me, Holy Ghost. And he would come after me. Now, 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 thinking that he would come after me, I kept looking behind me, looking in the rear view mirror. And I kept doing that for about three miles. I just kept on looking because I felt that he was coming. And my brothers and sisters, while I was looking behind me, I did not even observe that there was another police car in front of me. I was so focused on what was behind me that I could not see what was ahead of me. Paul says, don't allow yourself to be on a leash of your past. That's what Satan wants so that he can snap you back and forth time and time again. But thanks be to God, Christ can liberate us from our past. He can unshackle us from our past. The reason Christ came to this earth to die on the cross is so that you and I can have forgiveness. Christ will forgive your past. Christ will forgive your sins. There is nothing in your past too great for God to handle. Oh, I wish somebody on this day will declare, I am not going to allow my past to shackle me in 2021. Like Paul, I'm going to forget those things that are behind me. I'm going to develop divine amnesia. But then, but then, we must, in pressing forward, not only look to develop divine amnesia, but Paul says that we need to engage in deliberate action. Listen again to the words of the apostle. He says, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Notice he says this one thing I do. This is current activity. This is one thing that I'm doing. In a real sense, I'm pressing forward. And to press forward effectively, we must live in the present actively. Paul says this one thing. I do, and this can be summarized, and this can be summed up as three things. Number one, personal engagement, priority engagement, and purposeful engagement. He says, this one thing I do, 
personal engagement. He said, I, I press, I do, not we press, and we do. At some point in life, you must make the decision that comes what may, you will press on. If nobody else will, I will. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And in this season, you better be ready to stand alone. This one thing I do. But then he says, priority engagement. He says one thing. With so many things competing for our attention. Paul says I have resolved to put my priority in place. And in this year, this new year, I believe God is calling us to set our priority in order. If you will give focus to enriching your walk with God, you will make some decisions that strengthen you along the path. Now, I'm not trying to make any trouble today. But COVID has really exposed many of us by removing some of the fake excuses that some of us used to make. Many of us would say and make excuses that we can't come to Sabbath school on time or we can't attend prayer meeting because of the children or because you leave work late. Well, now it's online and you still don't make it. But in order to press forward, You've got to be intentional about making the effort to prioritize so that you can live the life that counts. Stop making silly excuses. Live your life for God. That's what counts. That's what matters. But then Paul says you need to have purposeful engagement. Dealing personally and dealing with your priority must be attended by purposeful engagement. Each of us have been entrusted by God with a special purpose and a special mission. We each need to find our purpose and accomplish it because a life lived without a purpose is a wasted life. We need to be deliberate about the use of our time, the choice of our friendships, the proper monitoring of our health, Spending time with family and friends. Spending time with the word. Spending time in prayer. Paul says, this one thing I do. I told you I'm out of your way. This light is dropping very quickly. Because the third thing he talks about is a determined attitude. Come here and see. Not only does he say you need to develop a divine amnesia. Not only must you engage in deliberate action. But he says you need to have a determined attitude. He, he says, he says this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Here is a man who is not content with divine amnesia. Here's a man who is not content with deliberate action. He says, I need to combine those with a determined attitude. He says, I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead through faith. I know it's there for me. So I'm reaching for it. I'm striving for it. I'm pushing for it. I'm pressing on toward the mark. I'm going to give it all that I have. I'm determined to make the mark. And in this season and in this time, you and I will have to put out some extra effort. I'm going to have to make sure that I stretch for it, that I push for it. I will not let negative people, negative issues, negative results daunt and dissuade and discourage me. By God's grace, in 2021, I will not yield under satanic pressure. I will not stray from my purpose 
and I will be steady and steadfast. I will be unflinching and unwavering. I'll keep my eyes fixed on the prize. Like a racehorse, I'll have my blinders on and I will stick to the word of God. I will stand up for him. I won't let anybody steal my joy, stifle my praise, and stymie my growth. Oh no, I'm going to press. I'm going to press forward. I'm going to keep on pressing. Say it however you want to say it. But as long as God gives you breath, you've got to stretch and press. Happy New Year, Kansas Avenue. I'm out of your way. Have a good and a blessed day. But before I go, can I press forward? Pastor McBride ended like this last week. And I do the same. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I, I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground. Well, that's all I'm about to say today. But for the person who needs to hear something else, you can stand upon the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fears assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Is there a promise from his word? Matthew 19, 26. With men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Is there a promise from his word? Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Is there a promise from his word? Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Is there a promise from his word? Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. Walk and not faint. Is there a promise from the Lord? Romans 8, 37, 39. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, things present, things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor COVID, nor Trump, nor haters, or any other creature will be able to separate me from the love of God. I'm pressing, 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 pressing. Yes, yes, pressing forward into this new year. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, Father in heaven. We thank you for this day, the opportunity of worship, the opportunity of coming and being revived, renewed, refocused, recharged. We thank you, God, that we can press forward in this new year. Help us to develop divine amnesia, not allowing the past to control us. Help us also, Heavenly Father, that as we move along, we will be deliberate about our action. But then, oh God, give us a determined attitude so that we will not be pessimists, but we will be optimists, knowing that you are there by our side. We pray this, oh God, in Jesus' name. Oh God, I pray for that person who is out there, that person who is watching the service right now, that person whose life, is challenged. I pray God that you will allow that person to write in the chat now that he or she wants to make things right. Help that person to make that decision and say clearly right now publicly on Facebook or YouTube things are different 
This is a new year. I'm turning over with God. I want to be baptized. I want to make a change to my life. Help them to do so now, oh God. And help us to reach out to them and help them in that transition as they make a change for you. We pray this with thanksgiving because we pray in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, shout amen and shout amen again. Cover me and count me with a blessing. Suffer me to come unto thee and hide. And high. 